Hello, thank you very much for, for joining me today. Uh, lovely to see a lot of familiar faces from yesterday, from our first Unity Developer Day that we held here. And uh, yes, today I would like to talk to you about the new uh, Unity rendering pipeline, specifically lightweight render pipeline, and what it can do uh, for you as developers, how it can help you uh, create your games, and um, what some of the benefits, why you should use it, how to migrate existing projects, how to customize this new render pipeline um, to suit your needs as well. So yeah, I'm Joshua Naylor. I'm uh, the evangelism lead at Unity in EMEA. So I've been at Unity now for around about five years, and this is actually my first time in, in Russia and in Moscow. So everybody's been lovely so far. So again, thank you very much for having me. Um, so yeah, I mean, we've been, some of us have been using Unity for, for a very long time, and um, one of the great benefits behind using Unity um, for your development is just the, the different art styles and um, kind of feel and all the different things you can do when making games. We see so many different um, games on mobile, on console, on Xbox, on VR and AR, and um, the multiple platform aspects in Unity is, is great. Um, the problem is, uh, for a long time, is that sometimes if you use aiming for super high-end PC or for high-end consoles, then it would be very hard to also do the same um, to get your games running on low-end mobile. And we also know from a lot of pain points from users um, that they want to use certain features, they have problems with the development, and the cost of like, testing and optimizing uh, is a huge pain as the engine has grown over such a long length of time for the last like 10 years. So what we've decided to do is completely rewrite our rendering and open it up to you as developers. It means that it's no longer a black box. It's a, a high level um, C sharp API. And what we've decided to do is release two kind of templates out the box. So lightweight render pipeline, LWRP, and high definition render pipeline, HDRP. So the point of uh, scriptal render pipelines is, again, to give the power to you as developers um, to create whatever you want to. So it's all open source. It's available on GitHub. And the whole idea is that you can take these existing templates and build upon them. So yeah, so I want to talk to you mainly about lightweight render pipeline today. So this is a built on top of SRP, which is Scriptable Render Pipeline Core. Uh, it's developed from scratch with mobile performance in mind. So like I said, the, the existing built-in renderer, is what we call it, is like 10 years old now. So having a brand new rendering um, system to bring it into the modern age of, of devices. It's scalable between multiple platforms. It's exactly what Unity's kind of mantra is all about. And a lot more improved workflow and extensibility. And finally, it's come out of preview in 2019.1, which is currently available. So it's been in preview as a package for the last year or so. So when we think about when we decide to make a game and we're going through the design phase, we kind of think about what, what decisions do we need to make? Is it going to be super high end? What kind of, uh, kind of artistic vision do we have? Is it going to be um, PBR shaders or simple materials? What kind of lighting and, and shadows is it going to have? And we can kind of assess what we need what kind of tools and what kind of features we're going to use in our engine by just deciding of what the game and the feel and the attic vision is going to be like. So when we think about uh, lightweight render pipeline rendering, it's a single pass forward renderer. So it means that, like the built-in renderer, every single light renders a new pass every time um, we, we move around lights. What this does now is gathers up to 16 different per pixel lights and puts them in one rendering pass. Um, right now, uh, linear preferred over color space, and we are actually created a, um, a PBR set of materials to go with 
lightweight render pipeline as well. So, and it includes stuff like anti-aliasing, uh, no temporal anti-aliasing, only uh, MSAA, and also does include a subset of the post effects stack. But again, because it's a single pass forward renderer, um, no TAA, uh, no motion blur, and no screen space reflections. So again, thinking about if we're going mobile, if we're going low-end PC, we're not going to be using these features anyway, but even more so, especially using a single pass forward render. A new set of standard shaders for lightweight. So this means that any of your existing materials, whether they're the standard Unity ones or custom, will not work with lightweight render pipeline or HDRP, high definition render pipeline. But we have all of the standard PBR, terrain, standard unlit, and all of the stock shaders like legacy and UI and skybox and sprite. And one big thing we notice that people are gonna be in a lot of pain upgrading. So we upgrade we've got an upgrade tool for all of these materials, which I'm gonna show you how to upgrade an existing project from maybe midway through development into lightweight runner pipeline and show you the benefit in terms of uh, rendering and optimization just by changing across the lightweight and changing to these new sets of standard materials. So, what actually does it include for lighting? We still have real-time lights, directional spot and point, but, um, and these can be controlled by the actual script to render pipeline asset, which I'm gonna talk about a bit later. So this is limited to 16 pixel lights in your scene. It doesn't mean that you can only have 16 lights. You could have hundreds of lights, but the only lights that will actually be rendered and working and enabled will be the ones closest to the camera. So I could have an entire environment with hundreds and hundreds of lights, but me as the player and the camera maybe behind me as a third person view, the only lights in this region would be working and rendering Ones away from me would not be. And spots up to four vertex lights. For shadows, we only have one shadow casting light. Generally, it's one main directional light, like the sun. We still have things like reflection probes, global illumination, and different light modes, such as baked, mixed, and uh, baked in direct and um, real time. So all of the things that you're used to in built-in pipeline, that's all there, but just a bit more limited because we can only have certain shadows or a certain number of lights. But again, this is to give what we call performance by default. So this is all part of um, helping you as users be more performant from the outset. So with our new dot, uh, dot stack, data on to tech stack with ECS, with our new rendering pipelines. These are all to give you like straight away a great um, kind of baseline of optimization. So instead of having just one kind of like rendering setup in your project, what you can do now is you create a lightweight render pipeline asset. So this is what it looks like if you tried to preview earlier last year, and this is what it looks like now. So this is just an asset in your project that can control your um, render type, your quality, lighting, shadows. And what's amazing about this is that you can swap in this asset at real time, at runtime, sorry. So that if you had different scenes that require different settings, if you wanted to change depending on what device you're running. So say if you was doing, um, running on maybe a low-end mobile and a high-end iPad, then you could swap that asset in once you understand what um, kind of hardware you're running on. Cool, so how do you actually get hold of this? First of all, you can go to the Unity Hub and you can go on our templates and grab Lightweight RP. So this will install a small template project, which should look like this. And you can get started straight away. Everything will be configured for you with just the default forward renderer. You can migrate your project. So what we're going to do right now 
is I'm going to open a project that's just in the built-in render pipeline. I'm going to back it up, of course. Get it from package manager, lightweight render pipeline. I'm going to create the lightweight render pipeline assets. And then I'm going to assign all of my um, my rendering under this asset, and everything will go pink and look terrible. And then I'm going to use the upgrade tool and show you the difference. Cool. So here we have, not this one, this one. Just this scene here. I grabbed it from the asset store. So this is quite a huge scene. And we can see what it's running like on my device here. So it's running at around what, 50 to 55 FPS, generally like yeah, 15 to 20 uh, frame rate, uh, refresh rate. So it's quite a large scene, and there's quite a lot of lights um, from the fire, from the um, different portals around, and it's quite big. So. And this is running on like a four-year-old MacBook, which I really need to upgrade at some point. So what I wanted to do is I would go to Window, I would go to Package Manager, and I want to install Lightweight Render Pipeline. So here it is. I've got an older version now, just for the sake of this demo, but it should w and my, me my next demo will be the fully updated version. And what I want to do is go to Edit, to my settings, and right here, I'm not using a render pipeline asset, so it'll just fall back to default to my built-in. I'm gonna go on project and create a new rendering lightweight render pipeline asset. And we can see here it's stored in my assets folder here, so I have two together. You can have as many as you want. We can see I can edit these values, general, quality, lighting, shadows. So again, all configurable just from this asset alone and swap in and out as I please. So what I'm going to do now is pull in this asset into my render pipeline and holy shit, it's gone pink. And this is like a, anybody's nightmare when they mess up all of their materials. And this is when everyone panics, like, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Fear not. So we go to assets, not assets, we go to edit, render pipeline, and what we want to do is upgrade the entire project materials to lightweight render pipeline materials. Again, it's going to tell you, please do backup. Yep, yep, yep. And we can see, near enough, everything has upgraded except my terrain, because I'm using a custom material. So I'm going to go on my, um, my terrain here. And it's here. Always fun. I forgot about this bit. Let's turn it off for now, and I'll come back to it. So what we can see in our material is that everything is now converted to lightweight render pipeline material just from using everything was standard before. And we can see in our dropdown, we have everything. So we've got lids, we've got terrain, we've got particles. Everything looks fine. Cool. So that's it. That's how you would upgrade your project. What I do want to show you is the benefits in both of the draw calls, in terms of um, performance, in, uh, performance increase. So we're looking at fill rate, draw call on GPU, draw call on the CPU, and bandwidth. So here's a few examples. So this is to show, this is what it looks like with built-in, and this is what it looks like with a lightweight render pipeline, just the fill rate. and the times lightweight render pipeline is faster on average just by swapping over to lightweight render pipeline asset. So we can see on Vulkan, 1.3 times. GLES, 1.47 times. For draw calls, again, Vulkan, 1.5. GLSE2, 1.45. 
Uh, CPU, again, every single time, it's faster. And a lot of people actually, when I talk about lightweight render pipeline, a lot of people ask me, oh, well, it's going to take a huge, huge um, dip in visual quality. Like, they believe that lightweight render pipeline will make their game look terrible, that it won't look as good. And this is a visual comparison between the two, just from going from the built-in pipeline across to lightweight render pipeline. And you can see side by side, there's some differences, but this is no tweaking involved. So who thinks this is built-in? No one? Who thinks this one's built in? Okay. So yeah. So built in, just the original uh, project is on this left side here. And this is on uh, left side here, right side here. But again, this is without any tweaking, without my designers, without my artists going in and changing the values. And I, personally, I don't think there's that much difference except how a bit darker the shadows are in certain areas. And I think the portals look better. But if we look at the actual numbers, so what I did was built it from the editor um, with PostFX on and off, uh, built it on my Mac, in Android, and um, an Android with PostFX. So we can see here, when it was just in the editor, we was looking at about 30 frames a second, up to 2,000 draw calls. That's with post effects on, which is bloom, vignetting, some color correction. And we can see when it's built on Android. So this is built on my Google Pixel 2. So it's around about 40 frame, 44 frames a second. In lightweight, solid 60. And this is, again, this is no tweaking. This is just me doing exactly what we did there, going from a standard project across the lightweight render pipeline. And with post effects turned on, with these um, effects AA, bloom, vignette, and color correction, again, from 38 FPS to 52. Cool. Again, another visual comparison. This is Angry Bots 2. I think even more so that the difference here is even less apparent than the scene that I showed. And we can see here on this left side is what was built in, and this was lightweight render pipeline. Again, these were without any tweaking, without anything. And we can see if, it's, if you can see them. So this first one, 1,200 batches, and the second one, 600. Again, without doing anything. Another feature that we've put in is a thing called SRP Batcher. So we've just released a blog post about this uh, last month. And what this is is that when we draw a set, uh, when we basically send our rendering um, to, the, to the GPU, it generally goes through in kind of like separate uh, buffers and executes a shader code. What we wanted to do instead was put objects in this larger buffer here, and then we can send it across into the shader code, rather than having individual buffers. We can all start into one and batch them, hence SRP batcher, and then execute all of those into the shader code. And that's just a single tick box. Currently, it's an experimental, uh, and it's mainly aimed but it's just default lightweight render pipeline shaders right now, so no custom ones, and anything that you create in Shader Graph. So right now it works on PS4, DX11, Vulcan, and Metal, and we're working on GLES uh, 3 and VR and Xbox One. Cool. So, improve workflows. So 
you may have seen stuff like Shader Graph and Visual Effect Graph, which are, first of all, Shader Graph is a node-based um, material editor, and Visual Effect Graph is a node-based um, kind of like GPU accelerated particle system, um, graphs system. So it's great because it's very artist friendly, quick iteration. I think it pushes your crit creativity in your studios because it en enables a lot more artists and designers to, to create shaders instead of having to write code all the time. And right now, and, and forever, it will only work with the script to render pipelines. You won't be able to use Shader Graph or VFX Graph using the built-in uh, pipeline system. You can only, only use it with Lightweight or with HDRP. We we're improving just our general inspectors, so you can pick uh, your render mode if you want to go front, back, up, both sides, blending controls, um, sorting and prioritization, and this is just all standardized across all of the default um, LWRP shaders. Just giving you a lot more control in the actual material itself. Um, yeah, sometimes you want to color the texture or the depth texture. Um, again, enabling you more control um, and because it's C Sharp API, you can grab all of that from the material itself. Part of um, making it more customizable is also being able to debug and understand what's happening. So we've improved uh, the frame debugger to work a lot better and give a lot more uh, information to you as users in the frame debugger. So just a, lo a lot more kind of um, advanced information, I guess, so that you're not having to trail through and guess what's happening and very limited information in what you previously had. Cool. So, improved customization. What does this mean? So, like I said before, these, this script or render pipeline core system is a C Sharp API, and you can create your own render pipeline assets um, like we have done for Lightweight and HD. What's also great, like I said, you can modify the existing ones. So if you're like fairly new to graphics programming or you're quite happy with most of the things in Lightweight but want to add your own thing, then you can do that. What's really cool is that you can also add in and inject your own custom render passes into um, the rendering pipeline. So yeah, we're going to do that soon. So you can do stuff like uh, render passes instead of post effects. So you could actually do um, certain rendering effects per objects on geometry or on game objects instead of on screen space. You can um, also see what we're doing with our own render passes. So we're doing stuff like playing our reflection, setting shadows, and at, like tune outlines. So we also have stuff like this, which I'm going to show you how to, to create your own render pass with Shader Graph. Yeah, and then yeah, you can extend the renderer, create your own passes to add on and stack up on top of, um, onto the existing layer. Some more things that are coming down the line. So a forward render is available right now. So like I said, it's a single pass light loop, uh, reducing the amount of draw calls. We've also got a 2D renderer coming soon. So right now, I'd probably advise you not to use um, shader um, lightweight render pipeline for 2D unless you're using lots of lights in it. But we're releasing a 2D version of lightweight render pipeline um, for optimizing 2D along with our 2D light system. And then coming later on in the year, a deferred renderer for lightweight render pipeline. Cool. So I want to show you now how we can create a custom pass using Shader Graph and inject it into lightweight render pipeline um, to create a cool effect where once these little characters go behind a turret, 
they've kind of got like a diver effect. Not that one. Here we are. So we've got these little mage guys. And what happens right now is when they go behind a turret, we can't see them. And I kind of like the effect in like the, um, Diablo, where they go behind an object and they can see kind of the outline. So let me press play and show you what's going on. So you can see they're running around and you can't see where they actually are. Cool. So, first things first, I want to grab my render pipeline. So here I am. We can see it's just using a normal forward renderer, the one that's in the package itself. And all of the um, variables are all just set to default. So I want to go into my folder and create a new rendering, render pipeline assets. So we've got the pipeline asset, which I'm already using, but I want to create a new forward renderer. I call this uh, custom dither thing. What we can see here is we're going to say what we actually want to apply to this layer mask. So right now it's everything. I want to disable my characters because I don't want to draw them on this render pass. Cool. Actually, let me go back so you can see it working properly. Everything. Then I want to go to my render pipeline assets. I want to go on custom because I want to use my own custom render pipeline now and bring in my custom dither thing into this like so. And then when I go to my custom dither thing, change off character, and now they disappeared because we're no longer rendering them on this layer of this, this general render pass. So now I actually want to add in a new render feature and called render objects. So notice that this is an experimental. So this will only work on 2019.1 using uh, shader, uh, lightweight render pipeline 5.1 plus moving forwards. So I want to call this custom diver pass. What do I actually want to draw? I want to draw all of my characters. This is because all of my mages on the layer, they're all set as the character layer. Cool. So we can see that they're drawn again now. So when I grab my little good dude here, let me go on. We need to enable depth. And let's put him behind. And you can still see that it's actually not been drawn. So why is that? This is because in our render feature, when we're doing a depth test, where we've got selected less equal. So it's actually not drawing it because as far as this is concerned, we're drawing the thing that's in front. But what we want to go on is greater. So when we pick greater, we can see now is actually rendered in front of the tower here. Cool. That's fine. But we don't actually want all of him rendered, the full character. We want a different um, material. So I'm going to add in a new material. And then in my override section, we can see we've got a material slot. There we go. 
And now we can say we want to set this base map. So anything what I change this color to be, that works. But I don't want to just do that with a normal shader. I actually want to create something with shader graph. So let's create a new shader graph shader. So we go on create, we go on shader, and then for this example, we just want to use an unlit graph. We'll call this dither graph. And we can see now it's just a, a shader in here. Because, it, because Unity knows that it's a shader graph shader, we can double click and we'll open shader graph. So like I said, if you've not seen shader graph before, it's a node-based material editor. And we can see our master node here, which is unlit master. And these are the four kind of areas we can adjust. Position, color, alpha, and alpha clip. So first of all, I want to add in a color. So I'm going to pull out color here. They'll pull up my color asset. And now I can grab this color and say, I want to make this green. Cool. And we can see the preview here. So I'm going to right click, go on custom mesh, I'm going to search for one of my mages, and I'll give it the mage asset. So now I can see what it would look like. I'll give you a nice little demo. I'm going to save this asset, go back to my Unity. In my material that I created before, which is currently just a general lit lightweight render pipeline, I want to go in the drop down and I want to go on my shader graph folder. If it wants to open, there we go. We can see shader graph. Don't do this to me now. When, Mac, when my Mac decides it's uh, all OK, we're going to go on shader graphs, because that's where all of our assets that we make in shader graph are stored. Don't we all love this nice waiting game? Yes. Oh, no. That's one I created earlier. Fun, fun times. And then what we're going to do with our shader graph shader, we're going to add in uh, a dither. We're going to add in uh, Fresnel effects. And we're going to change the color all from um, the shader graph and then put it through to the inspector so it can be exposed. So we can see, where do we make it? It was called dither graph. Lovely. Cool. So we can see our dither graph. We decided on the color, this green. And, but we will also notice that we cannot actually change it from the inspector. That's because we've not exposed the value. So I'm going to open up my graph again. We can see here. And I want to right click on here. And I want to convert this to a thing called a property. So now we can see this thing that we call the blackboard. This means that it's a property exposed in the inspector itself. Just like when we're creating a C sharp script and we make it public, like a public float, we can see it in the inspector. Cool. So if I press save again and go back to our dither, we can now see that this color is exposed in the inspector, and we can change that. So this means that if you're the person who's writing or creating this shader graph shader, it means that no one else can kind of mess it up by going into the shader itself. You can just get everything to, to, to change around in here. So let's add in some actually better stuff here. So I want to go and create a node. And we have an actual effect called dither. And this is a variable like from 0 to 1. Let's say it's 0.9. 
And we can see it's kind of like this, this nice effect. And we're going to pull that in to our alpha. We'll notice nothing happens, not to worry. The only thing we need to do is go into our cog system here. And we're going to change our surface to be transparent. And there we go. We can see that this now has a nice diver effect. So we're going to save our asset. We're going to press play. And we can now, when we press play, see them all running around. But what's going to happen, if, if it doesn't crash, is we'll only actually see the characters when they are behind a tower. Do you know when it works perfectly the 10 times that you try it in the morning and then doesn't work perfectly afterwards? Come on. This is because when we set up our render pass, we only told it to render when it's in front of the objects here. We've not actually told it to render its normal texture again when it comes away from these objects. So if I grab my little mage guy, oh, it's going to play mode again. And I move him around. We can see he's not being drawn, only drawn when he's here. So what we need to do is we need to go back to our custom diver effect. And we're going to add in another render pass to say we actually want it to draw normal texture. So we'll go plus here. Render object. Let's open it up, go on, change the name to say character. And again, go back to our layer mask and say, what do we actually want to draw this time? We want to draw our character. So this is back. But now what happens is when we go behind a turret, we can still see that he's drawn again back with his color. So let's go back to the custom dither thing. And what we need to do is, in the first instance when we enable depth, what we need to do is untick right depth. And now, when we grab our guy and move him around, we can see that he's got his normal color and his normal texture on when he's not in front of a turret. And then when he moves behind a turret, he will have the custom dither effect. So that's how you would create two custom render passes to create this kind of effect on, um, with Lightweight Render Pipeline. And as you can see, literally no code was used in this. Everything was drag and drop, creating a new asset, a new render pass, and then also using Shader Graph to create your custom effects to put in um, on these new render passes. So just to give you a quick summary, what we've looked at is Lightweight Render Pipeline is part of a customizable, scriptable render pipeline, a C-sharp API for you as developers to create your own custom rendering. It means that Unity is no longer a black box. It means that you can optimize for your devices by default. You can target low-end mobile, um, PC, consoles, and get performance benefits just by switching across to Lightweight Render Pipeline. You can create your own custom passes with Shader Graph and using the VFX Graph uh, with these tools. There's only really benefits to be had. Thank you very much for having me.
I'm going to be around the rest of the two days. Thank you. Uh, if someone have questions. Uh, so actually, you uh, compared uh, standard shaders, not the mobile ones, uh, with lightweight render pipeline. So, for example, for my project, when I changed uh, mobile shaders to lightweight, I uh, lost a lot of performance, not uh, got any benefits at all. And uh, what uh, the lowest end for lightweight render pipeline from your experience, like uh, iPad Mini 2 or so? Uh, yes, good question. Um, so, first things first is, yes, right now, as we've just released, it's all um, PBR standard lightweight materials. What the plan is for the future is creating more mobile-based lightweight render pipeline materials to go into that, um, to that set, and also creating a post-effect stack just for lightweight, just for mobile as well. But yeah, to, uh, to your question, um, yeah, generally we're saying uh, no earlier than Android 4.5, I think it is now. So yeah, about iPad Mini 2 is what, 2014, 15? I'd say yeah, probably around that level. Like there's only so low end that you can go when it comes to this kind of thing. Um, but yeah, the, the whole point is that we can then release more mobile friendly shaders and materials to go along with that. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I have two small questions. Uh, first, uh, does it make sense to uh, use it for simple 2D game, which uh, doesn't have uh, 2D lights uh, or something, just sprites and maybe uh, a little count of uh, particles uh, and so on. Uh, and, then, uh, and second questions, uh, what about um, third party assets? For example, spine or something, uh, what we can do with it, with uh, LW pair? Yeah, um, so for the first question, 2D, um, if you're doing generally unlit 2D right now, there's probably no need because it's mainly how it handles all of the lights and puts them into one pass. Um, like I said, in the future, when we have 2D lights and we have this 2D lightweight rendering pipeline asset and uh, general pipeline, then yes. But for now, for the next, for the foreseeable future, for like probably this year, going maybe like at the end of, maybe end of the year, I would say stick with just built-in pipeline for 2D. Um, for third-party assets, um, it completely depends on that user to upgrade them across to the new pipelines, but the majority of just general tools should be working. It's most of the graphics tools and the graphics um, packages that would need to be upgraded to, to lightweight render pipeline or HDRP. As of the latest uh, LYRP version, uh, it is not possible to uh, stack the cameras to render into the same render target. So uh, I've seen in forums a new workflow of doing it, and it is with uh, defined camera layers. So a camera layer for the main view, for uh, screen space stuff, for uh, UI, and so on. Uh, why is that? Yes. Yeah, so. Um the new stackable system, like you said, you can kind of put different layers on top of each other because the previous one just wasn't optimal, really. It was an old system. It was something that needed a lot more um, customizability because it didn't fit as many use cases as we'd like, as, as it needed, really. It didn't fit as many use cases as people needed it to, what we found anyway. Um, so this new system is in like an early preview, but the whole point of it is like on the forums is getting the feedback that people need uh, that want to give us of how they actually use it so that we can try and get all of those use cases together. Uh, thank you very much. And um, if I use uh, lightweight, uh, lightweight uh, render pipeline, uh, can I uh, cut off uh, other modules, modules uh, that uh, are not used for lightweight uh, to reduce the final size of uh, application? 
Yeah, you, so yeah, the whole point of package manager was to reduce um, project size and file size. So you can start removing, say, physics. Um, we're going to be moving things like timeline to a package, so you could remove all of timeline. We're going to be um, removing and basically transitioning a lot of the core editor to packages, so you can remove them as well. So right now, when you launch a new project, project you've, we're trying to go as light as possible in that sense. Um, so yeah, that's the whole point of package manager as a whole. Hey, thank you for the presentation. Uh, is it possible to edit shaders, custom shaders, in text editor for lightweight render pipeline? I mean. Um, so you, the custom shaders that you have already, um, there is um, documentation coming out how to actually upgrade them to lightweight. There's no way to do that right now automatically. You'd have to just look at what a lightweight render pipeline shader looks like and then transition that across to, to your existing code. Um, there's no way also to take a custom shader and put it into shader graph right now either. Again, you'd have to start from scratch and, and build it up. So only through shader graph? Only through, sh no, so you can create, you can write custom shaders for lightweight render pipeline, yes. Oh, cool, cool. Um, and but it's not, you, there's no easy transition to just automatically do it. I see, and the second question, uh, is it account for uh, tiled deferred render in some new phones? Uh, I mean, is it possible to make uh, one project that will use both lightweight render pipeline for low-end device, uh, devices and also use features of uh, deferred tile rendering, uh, for example, custom shaders that use some features of deferred tile rendering on new uh, devices? Um, yeah, it's a good question, I guess, yeah. Uh, there'd be no reason not to. Basically, the, the asset that you use in the settings is configurable at runtime. So you could have five different lightweight render pipeline assets at the start of your, oh, actually, no. <laughs> because, <sighs> yes, you can, okay, you can. <laughs> so what you'd have to do is create two different materials for each asset, one lightweight one, and one um, standard one, one built-in render pipeline one, then what you would have to do in the settings, you would have to access the, the asset and swap that in and out or remove it and then change all of the materials and every single object that you want it to show. So yes, you can, but I would definitely advise not doing that. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Uh, are there a possibility to set up custom uh, rules for uh, draw calls reduction? Custom rules for draw call reduction? Yeah. Whew. <laughs> <laughs> I guess what you would have to do is do like if definition um, to understand what hardware you're running on and swap different asset, like swap the different render pipeline assets in and out, um, but there'd be no like automatic way to, to do that. Okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, I have two small questions. One is, uh, is it a preview or uh, it's already uh, stable? And the uh, other question is about uh, shader variance. Uh, when I tried to uh, light my render pipeline, Pipeline uh, compilation time increased a lot. For example, it takes like 25 minutes to compile all the shader variants, and it's not cached uh, before the builds, uh, between the builds. Uh, so, uh, do you have in mind uh, some ways of optimizing that? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. First of all, um, it is out of preview. Lightweight render pipeline and SRP core is out of preview right now in 2019.1. If you're using 2018, whatever version, you would have to still use one of the previous previews. 
um, including um, LTS version as well. It's still on a preview there. Um, for the second one, shader variance and optimization time, I don't know. Um, but if you come see me afterwards, I could put you in touch with the guys who are working on it and ask them. Cool. Thank you so much for having me. Spasiba.